Hey, you've tuned into the G Fran Happy Show tonight. The Savvy Gluten Shopper is a new book on the market, and I'm talking to the author, Jennifer Fugo, with GlutenFreeSchool.com. She's sharing the healthy, budget friendly tips. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the G Green Happy Show that happens every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Kathy, and I have been G Free and Happy for five years and counting. Tonight is one of my favorite people in the G Free community. Her name is Jennifer Fugo. She's my guest tonight. She has a new book, and we'll be showing it right now, right, producer? The Savvy Gluten Free Shopper How to Eat Healthy Without Breaking the Bank. So we'll be talking to her in just a few minutes. But first, episode 67 of the G-Free and Happy Show is brought to you by thephilosophy.com. The Philosophy Superfood Powders are a blend of the very best plant-based materials on earth. Sophie created some of the best healing superfood powders out there on the market. The Berry Bliss is a stress-fighting, mood-enhancing superfood blend and includes the highest vitamin C and antioxidant content of any whole food source in the world. So go to thephilosophy.com and say Kathy sent you. It's been a joy to have her as my sponsor this month. And next month, I have Chef Kirsten with MesaDeVita.com as my sponsor. So let's get Jennifer on and talk all about her new book. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Kathy. Thank you again, because it's really late on the East Coast. I really appreciate all my my wonderful uh, guests that come on so late at night. So thank you, Jen. Well, I appreciate you having me back. I, I, I Love think you. this is the third time that I've been on your show. And I can't believe you've been on 67. You've had 67 episodes. That's awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, you're always welcome. I always hear a lot of um, great comments about you personally um, being on my show. So I appreciate oh. it. I know. Cool. It is. That's really nice. <laughs> uh, so you've been on a few times, but still you should tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how and why you started this wonderful book. And we'll be putting up the book as you talk. So I'm the founder of a website called Gluten Free School, and I am gluten sensitive. And I decided several years ago that I wanted to give gluten sensitive people, specifically women, but I definitely have a lot of men that follow my website as well who were looking for simple, empowering steps that would make real lifestyle changes and health changes, um, but that weren't complex or you know that involved being in the kitchen all day. So everything is simple, clear, straightforward, but at times there is that element of connecting the dots for people. I love to do that and help them, I don't know, I love helping people feel better and empower that change where they're like, yeah, I can totally do this. I got, you know, 10 steps down the road and now I'm ready for the next journey of, you know, or of whatever, um, you know, level of um, folding back the gluten-free diet might happen for them. And um, the book, The Savvy Gluten-Free Shopper, was a compilation of so many different tips and tricks that I had shared with clients over the years that had come from my own personal experience when my husband was laid off. And so I had to find ways to, you know, deal with a lack of finances. And, you know, we can certainly speak more about that. But in taking all of these strategies, um, I figured out a way to save so much money on food. And it's not about um, living on a shoestring or you know focusing on cheap, cheap quality food. This is real, healthy, good quality food. And it just happens to be gluten free. You can make one meal for your family. It's good for you. Um, it lacks, you know, major allergens because a lot of people have multiples, and um, you know, you save money and less cooking in the process. So it's it's a lot of a win-win situation for for families out there. 
And that is, uh, we're going to go back to some of this already, but the the key to me in having you on this is because this is a huge part of any kind of diet or lifestyle that you have an allergy to, like gluten, uh, and everything that you go into the store, and you don't want to spend your whole paycheck on food, but the gluten-free food is pretty <laughs> expensive, and you kind of find the, the, the your way through life um, after a few years of being gluten-free but during those key times too you're almost depressed just because you're spending so much money on this food that's not that great Um, so it's it's come a long way there's definitely been strides made since I went gluten-free in 2008 but I I do hear you and I don't know if you saw but in the book I do talk about why gluten-free is so much more expensive and there are a lot of facets to that but I think that it's important for people to know that if you think that a gluten-free diet is more expensive you are not imagining it Uh, There was a study done that showed in a comparison of products, those gluten-free to the normal, you know, wheat-filled or barley-filled varieties, that the gluten-free diet on average costs consumers about 242% more. That's like two and a half times more money. I mean, I can certainly point to plenty of of examples of when it was even more than two and a half times more expensive. Um, But there are also some interesting things going on now with some producers that where they can lower the price because they have um, more access uh, to uh, supermarkets and uh, materials and things like that, like big companies that make pasta or big companies that make baked goods. And um, so they have more options of lowering the price, but a normal company does not. I would think that would be the case when when they start um, getting more mass production, uh, especially like the pastas and things like that. That's good. That's good to know because I can buy pastas for pretty cheap now. Yeah, it's come down, it's come down considerably, but I can still go into the supermarket and find less than a pound of gluten-free pasta for $4. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's like 12 ounces of pasta, and I'm just like, yeah, no, Um, no I know, and and pasta is usually one of those foods, too, that you could feed a whole family and, you know, your guests and all. Uh, Instead of talking about that some more, I want to go into, before I forget, Uh, So your husband was laid off and you're gluten free. Now, right off the bat, that would be scary because everything is so pricey. Tell us how this kind of um, idea came where you wanted to add this to the book, too. And probably people talk about this budget friendly or wanting a budget friendly kind of uh, lifestyle, too. So tell us what happened there. Well, I had been gluten free for, I guess it was a maybe about a year Um, and we were not we knew his company that he worked for was expecting layoffs but we honestly did not think that he was going to be a part of it so we didn't plan for it we didn't take any precautions (laughs) we didn't we were I was shocked when he called me and said I got laid off it you know and we um we lost two thirds of our household income. Um, it was really a, a very hard time for the both of us, and and simultaneously, I had been I had gotten sick again. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know me, you can certainly go back and read about my story um, on my website at Gluten Free School. But I had gotten sick again with adrenal fatigue and candida, and so the option of just going to buy cheap food wasn't possible because I actually needed to eat better in order to heal myself. So now I'm stuck. I've got bad health and I've got not a lot of money to deal with. What do I do? And so I am a firm believer that there are really no problems in life. There are only solutions that have yet to be found. Um, I'm very resourceful and I was determined to figure out a way to be able to feed myself um, with with the small 
um, you know, financial um, support from, you know, what my husband was getting from, um, you know, he did have some unemployment coming in every month, but it wasn't very much. And from what my job was allotting me at the time. And um, I was able to, we ate grass fed meat, we ate wild caught fish. Like we didn't, you know, I mean, there was a time when, you know, I would pick and choose between certain conventional vegetables and, and fruits and, and those that were organic. But we weren't necessarily eating, you know, like really refined products and scraping by and begging our parents for help. We didn't have to do that at all. I figured out that, first of all, there is a tremendous amount of food waste that goes on in people's homes. Um, the average family of four wastes up to 25% of their food. It's in the trash, and that means you're throwing money in the trash. So I figured out how to stop wasting food. Um, that was a big part of it. And that simultaneously allowed me to always have supplies of gluten fresh, freshly cooked and safe gluten free food on hand that I could say pull out of the freezer in a moment's notice and make myself some food. Um, and you know, we we just started to experiment with our crock pot and bulk cooking. And you know, I am not a Susie homemaker type at all. Like I really respect women that like, you know, they're at home and they're doing the thing with the kids and that's, that's their thing. And that is a big job, by the way. I have yes, it is. <laughs> moms out there, but like I have a business and the book and all the speaking engagements that I have, I'm really busy. I don't have time to be in the kitchen all the time. So I figured out how I could only cook, you know, two or three times a week, but still be able to feed my husband and I as if, you know, I was cooking every day. And that's a good point, too, that, you know, we're all busy in our life and we all go to those fast foods. We all go to the, you know, whatever's the easiest way to figure out a way to eat dinner, then do what you're saying. Because if you put the crock pot, if you know you're going to be busy, probably that savvy tip, one of them would be the crock pot. For, mm -hmm. for so and let's talk about those savvy tips and why you use savvy so much in your book well the reason that I use the word savvy is because savvy is also it also means smart it's about being smart and you know as far as the grocery store is concerned I came to realize um, from my actually my uncle used to work for a, a large grocery chain and That's he's like oh enough. yeah you know well, this was the thing. He said, you know, everything is placed in such a way to make you want to buy it. You know, food companies pay for certain um, storage sp or shelf space. The, the food that's at eye level, they pay to put their get their products on those shelves. And the ones down below that you never see, they're not paying for that space. So we don't realize that the grocery stores are working us. So why not learn how to work the grocery store? <laughs> it's only fair, you know? And True. So, <laughs> and so that was one thing that I realized, like I have to get, I have to out, be able to outsmart not only food or food marketing, you know, the, all the health claims and labels on food products, but I really actually have to be able to outsmart a grocery store that's trying to convince me to buy things that I don't even need. Things that are on the verge of going bad that you can't even save. Things like, uh, I'll never forget, you walk into the grocery store and see all those bags of spinach on sale, like buy one, get one free. Most of the time those things are going to go bad in like a day and you you can't save spinach <laughs> like it's just gonna end up in the trash because it gets slimy so learning what is worth it to buy on sale and what isn't um, and you know one of the the things I, I sort of want to back up a second is before you even go to the grocery store meal planning is a life skill it is a life skill that is no longer taught um, I never learned it my home ec class was about making pancakes and um, <laughs> You know, learning how to iron like it was. A, it was sort of not. Very I think valuable. sewing was in mind too. Sewing. Yes. And and they don't, but they don't teach us how to meal plan. So if you go to the grocery store without a plan, and then you figure, well, I'll buy stuff, and then I'll make my. Re I'll figure out what recipes I'm going to make. 
That is completely backwards. You figure out what you want to make first, then you develop your grocery grocery list, and then you go shopping. It saves you money and it saves you time and uh, frankly, a lot of headache because I don't want to have to find recipes for stuff that I have. Especially if you're not a good cook, you should look for a recipe first for guidance so you know how much to buy of certain items. So meal planning is really important and that's something that's highly stressed in my book and I actually teach anybody that reads this book how to meal plan, how to do it where they're only going to cook two to three times a week. That is wonderful advice and uh, worth buying this book and we're going to talk about how you buy the book at the end of the show so don't leave until then. Okay, Um, so Give us some ideas on how to, well, you just did give us some, but give us some tips on some of the things we should, like your favorite three tips of the book. What would we all really need these days, especially trying to eat healthy and gluten-free or any allergy-free? So gluten-free products are going to be expensive, period, as we've already addressed. And even though certain more nutrient dense foods that we know happen to be gluten free, like grass fed meat or wild caught fish, um, chicken, uh, and other types of poultry and land animals, those types of things which are nutrient dense, if you consume that, and there's nothing wrong if you're ve- veget- vegetarian or vegan, um, but if you do, you know, those expiration dates on the packaging at the grocery store. Those are just the sell-by dates. So the grocery store can't sell that produce beyond that point. It doesn't mean it's bad. So a lot of times what I'll do, and I did this yesterday when I went to the grocery store, that was grass-fed beef, and it's usually about $10 a pound. I look for the expiration date. I said, okay, I know what day to come in because they have to sell it by that date, the day before, so they will mark it down 50% to get rid of it. And all of the guys that work in the meat departments will then take that meat home and put it in the freezer and use it themselves because they know that there's nothing wrong with it. So I've been able to buy packages of um, grass-fed beef cubes this past winter. I think I bought six or eight packages on sale for 50% off. Um, just put them right in the freezer and then pulled them out every other week. I, you know, some weeks I only have to spend $40 at the grocery store because all I'm getting are vegetables and a few other staples. I don't need to buy the most nutrient dense things because I've already gotten them on a discount and I keep them in my freezer. And by the way, for people who think that I have some ginormous sub-zero freezer (laughs) in my house, I have that small rectangle, you know, (laughs) that everybody has. Most people have above their refrigerator. I have an old refrigerator, so I'm nothing special. It's just a jigsaw puzzle of whatever I can figure out how to get in there. Well, wait, now this is really good because I am, I don't eat any meat now unless, you know, a special occasion that I had to. But uh, for me at my house, I never have anything that has, because I don't have antibiotics. I don't want that in my meat anymore. So that is a huge tip for me because it can be pricey Mm -hmm. for good quality meat. Yeah, I mean, ten. I'm not kidding when I say ten dollars a pound. So I got those for five dollars a pound. Um, you know, and you know, I look for sales on when the wild caught fish that's flash frozen goes on sale. Um, I don't generally buy fresh fish unless it's like a special occasion because that's expensive and you only have like a day to cook it. Um, so again, it's sort of you've got to know, you know. I and two, I would never suggest making fish at the beginning of the week because it's never going to last the whole week. You want to make meals that will last you three to four days and get you through the bulk of the week, and then maybe third. Thursday night or Friday night, you make them the, the fish, special night. Yeah. Right. When you only have like a day, because fish is really only good like for a day after you cook it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just kind of knowing those little savvy tidbits. Um, and, you know, too, I think wow. the other thing. That's good. I think the other thing, too, is people don't realize you can bulk up meals with beans and grains if you eat them. And those are both you can freeze them. So if you open a can of beans or you cook a pot of beans and you make too much or you have too much left over, you can freeze them in your freezer instead of throwing them away. 
And, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is if I'm going away or something, I'll make a big pot of rice for my husband in my rice cooker and I'll freeze part of it in um, freezer lock bags. And you just put it in the freezer. The r- you, can, you know, it's because you can buy the, fr- I, mm-hmm. I see frozen rice all the time. Yep. And that's another savvy tip, the rice cooker. I see those and I think, ah, I never need that much for the two of us. But if you do what you just said, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have to make it all the time. That's what exactly. is a pain. Um, right. And it cooks it and it cooks it for you. That's the other thing. My rice cooker costs $17 and I got it almost nine years ago. It has paid for itself in spades. That's a, a really good point that I was um, just wondering. We went by Costco the other day, and I saw the rice cooker, and I keep thinking, why would I need that much? But thank you. Uh, Yesenia's <laughs> asking, is there a chance that stores will not carry grass-fed anymore if they can't sell it except in clearance? Oh, that is a good point. It's a good point. You know, but you've got to shop around. I mean, around me, we must have 20 different grocery stores, so look around. You know, that's that's the thing I can tell you. That's what I would tell you. And here's the other thing. When you learn how to, um, you know, like, as I was saying, like conventional versus organic produce, like, for example, I don't buy organic sweet potatoes, organic onions um, and some other things, because frankly, the pesticide um, count is really low in those items. So why are you paying more money? I mean, unless you have unlimited funds, that's great, but you need to prioritize what's most important to you. And a lot of times frozen vegetables, you can get more for a lot less than you would get with uh, fresh vegetables. Spinach, ooh, I'm not a big fan of frozen spinach, but no. um, you, know, you can get frozen butternut squash, you can get frozen green beans, frozen peas. I mean, there is so much in the, the freezer aisle and many, uh, you know, I suggest in the book that a lot of people get a grocery shopping guide that te- se- tells you which products um, are gluten free. And I think it's Celia's Marketplace. That book actually has store brands listed. That, that book is incredible. And and so if you're not sure if the store brand frozen vegetables near you are gluten free, she has. I was shocked because the ones near me are and I would have never guessed they're not labeled as such, but they've done the homework for you. That's so, another good tip. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm just, it just keeps coming. I, I just want to say real quick to round that out is that if, say, your local store goes, oh, well, I can only sell it on clearance, so we're not going to carry it anymore. Truth be told, if you're saving money everywhere else, then maybe you get a cow share or you find a local farmer that is producing things and you have more money now in your budget to be able to afford it. So, you know, even though you're you're trying to meet a certain amount of, um, you know, you're try- maybe trying to stay within a certain uh, limit, if you are able to save elsewhere, that affords you the ability to buy better quality in others. Okay, so I just want you to just tell us everything that's in the book now because... <laughs> It's like, wow, those were really good save, tip save. I mean, I could use every time I go to the store because, um, and the spinach too. I'm going to have to watch it because I like the, the spinach, fresh spinach. But you're right, it does get slimy. Mm-hmm. And I and bet you know because of that. And I was going to tell you too, is I, so I'm, I'm in the process of going through a course right now and I actually, one of my homework assignment is to, I have to create a week's menu plan based around Pennsylvania State's low income um, food assistance program. And I was really surprised as I was going through the grocery store, I never one was able to keep to the low income level for a single person, which was $47 and I think 40 cents for a week worth of food. But um, you know, things like collard greens were a dollar ninety nine for a pound of them, as opposed to a bag of spinach, which is three sixty nine. So you really have to ask yourself, what is more nutrient dense? And a lot of times, it just involves a little more work. I don't buy the stuff in those bags because you get a lot less for a lot more. If you buy a head of lettuce, chop it up, put it in a salad spinner, rinse it off pump the thing so it gets all the liquid out and put it into a Ziploc bag, get the air out, it'll stay fine in your fridge for nine, maybe 10 days if you don't eat it all, you know, beforehand. And you'll you'll end up with a lot more. It just, it again, it's just that little extra bit of work. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And it goes a long way. 
So how did you get to know all this? <laughs> Just from trial and error and, and thinking savvy like you did during those yeah. times. Yeah, because and, and the other thing too, I, I became disgusted with the idea that I was throwing away money. Yeah. I mean, literally any time I have to throw food away, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is like five or $10. Like I'm, you're, you are literally throwing money into the trash when you throw food away. And, and, and when you start to think about that and you realize how hard you work for the money that you earn, and it's not to say that now I have more flexibility with my um, financial situation, but I still practice them because you know what, it affords us the ability to go on an, it afforded us the ability to go on extended weekend down in Florida the past week. It affords us the ability to be able to take some trips here and there and do things that we wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. So, you know, whether maybe you have student loan bills or you'd like to do something nice with your spouse, maybe go for a weekend away in New York, the amount of money that you save can be upwards of almost $6,000 a year. It's not like tiny pennies. That's the thing. People think that they're throwing away pennies. You are throwing away thousands of dollars a year. You are savvy and more savvy and <laughs> I want to we're going to talk about the book in just a second those were amazing tips and I bet everybody watching wants to buy that book right now so let's talk about uh, your book now I have your website up um, and all you do is you click on click here to buy now so you go to <laughs> glutenfreeschool.com and I honestly all you do is click it and there it is. It's on Amazon. And a lot of people already have this Prime um, that you can go and just one-click shopping. So I hope all of you check this out. The book's right here. Uh, Jennifer put a lot of time and effort into this. And boy, there's a ton of tips. So uh, I hope all of you buy this book. And I really appreciate the support, Kathy, that you've given me and that everyone has been so warm and welcoming. And I have talks all over the eastern half of the U.S. this year. So, you know, if you buy a book, please bring it. I'd love to meet you um, and sign it. I've had some like, I just love to meet people. You know, I'm just like everybody else. I'm a this is me, you know. <laughs> and you just you so. just met Taylor. Uh, we were just talking about that before the show. And he's a huge, he's been on my show like four times. I love that guy. Yeah. Uh, so it's fun that you guys got to, uh, and we're showing a picture of you now, um, got to actually see each other in person. So I am hoping, and I know you have a fan base in Seattle here. So we'll have to have a party if you ever do come out to Seattle. And I know people in California are watching too. So uh, they would come to your book party or an expo <laughs> or whatever you end up doing. Well, I'm working on it. I had talked to somebody in Seattle. Um, but you know, it's again, it's that process of uh, some places have, you know, the ability, you know, it's, it's finding the ways to get out there and what works for everyone in the scheduling and, and some people, some ex expos are already booked with their speakers for the this year and some are not. So I'm still, I am still actually booking more dates. I, I just booked a date in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which I'll be there. I think it's May 18th. I was just um, going to ask you, so where are you speaking? Because your website's on the, sure. um, it's on our screen now at glutenfreeschool.com. Check her out there. But what, where are some of the events you're going to next? Sure. I'm having a book signing party at the local gig meeting in Philadelphia, which will actually be in Westchester, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, this coming Thursday, April 3rd. And then from there, I'm going to be speaking at Paleo FX down in Austin, Texas. I think that's like the 10th or 11th of April. And then I'll be going to Nashville, Tennessee. I think that's April 26th. I'm speaking at the Gluten-Free and Allergen-Free Wellness Expo. I'll be in Cranford, New Jersey at uh, a fearless parent event speaking on a panel with doctors and other wellness experts so um, that's I think May 3rd and um, I'll be in Raleigh Durham as I said Grand Rapids Michigan um, in May and then Raleigh Durham uh, the middle of August uh, and um, and then I'll be speaking at Natural Products Expo East uh, for the retailers and buyers so I'm I'm actually 
actively t collecting information from people in our community, but what they would love for me to share and take back to tell directly to buyers of grocery stores. So if anybody has any thoughts, please email me, tweet me, Facebook me, let me know because I am actually going to be standing up there and giving a 45 minute presentation that's only for this group of people and it's one of the largest food natural food expos in the United States. When is that? Because I might That is too. September, I believe it's September 17th. It's in Baltimore. Excellent. So everybody check out uh, she, Jennifer's on Twitter, Facebook. She's got a million fans too on Facebook. Uh, it's amazing. But knowing what you're doing for all of us, it's, uh, you know, it's no surprise. So um, Jennifer, it's been a pleasure to have you and uh, everybody go out and buy this book. It sounds like it's going to be a top seller at Amazon. Well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate everybody's support out there, people who have already purchased the book. And if you're going to buy it, thank you. I really, it really means a lot to me. And I hope that you get a lot out of it. And, and please let me know what you think. Sounds good. Thank you again, Jennifer. Thanks for having me, Kathy. So um, check out her book. I mean, really, she's top notch. Um, this has been a wonderful show. I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, check out gfreeandhappy.com. Um, until next week, have a great G-Free Happy Week. <laughs>